I'm Ewald Glenn Krugel, but I go by Glenn. Well, I was born <coughs> April 21st, 1926 in Beaumont, California. That's a little town uh, north of Palm Springs, uh, east of San Bernardino. I lived there about 12 years old. I was the oldest of four boys. Uh, my dad was an avid hunter and fisherman and he passed that on to all of us boys and we continued to do that. I was always interested in flying, made model airplanes. Uh, one day uh, out on a house field near our house, an auto gyro landed. That's an airplane that has a propeller in front plus a, a rotating prop. And he was given rides, I think, for three or four dollars, which was a lot of money in those days. But that's all I wanted for my birthday is to get a ride in that. And so my dad got me a ride in it and that did it. So I was <laughs> destitute then to be a pilot. Um, soon after that, we moved to Fresno, California. Uh, my dad worked on the Fryant Dam up there. I was in, in a movie, in an afternoon movie, up in Fresno, California. And they stopped the movie, and the guy got up on the stage and announced that we're in war. I definitely remember up in Fresno, of course, where we have an awful lot of Japanese farmers. They immediately uh, started an encampment out of Fresno for the, for the Japanese. And uh, when we moved to Fresno to save money, my dad, instead of having a moving van, he bought a big truck because he had all of us boys to help him. And we actually moved to Fresno in that truck. Well, we still had the truck. So they needed that truck at the encampment. So they hired me and the truck as a combo. <laughs> I was still going to school, but it was such a turmoil. You, there were just thousands of people working on this to get this thing done. So what we would do, we would, it was, I hate to admit it, but we would check in and with my, they'd use my truck and I'd check my truck in and then I'd climb over the fence and go to school <laughs> and I'd go back and climb over the fence and check out. So I was being paid for, for and you could work 24 hours a day. And just, they just paid because there was such turmoil going on, you know, anything. But they built that thing in, in a matter of weeks. They had the entire thing built with all concrete slabs and, and everything and turned all those Japanese people just, and at that time, uh, there was wild stories about shooting Japanese people on the streets and things like that. But they were all interned in, in, in that, and so I definitely, that was a big, a big blow that, uh, that I'll always remember. And then we moved to Ontario, California and I finished high school there, and uh, as soon as I could, I got in cadets. And uh, fortunately, I passed the physical, except that I had four wisdom teeth that they said there wasn't room for. They were just starting to come in. So he says, get those teeth out and come back tomorrow. So I had to go to the dentist. They pulled out four teeth. I went back and I passed my physical. There was eight of us went down and only two of us passed. The others were all flunked for different physical reasons, so I felt very fortunate that I was able to, to pass the physical. Um, so I enlisted and graduated in June of 1944 and uh, got orders in September to, to uh, go to primary school. So I went to primary and uh, finished that and then I, <coughs> we were going to go to primary flying and they sent me to Keesler, Mississippi to uh, await flying school to open, the main flying school to open. Well, there was a big backlog because the war was sort of winding down. So I spent about a month washing airplanes and I got discouraged with that. So I went to the commander and said, there's something I can do, I want to I see combat. And he says, well, it just doesn't look good from a cadet point of view. So I resigned my cadet um, and went into it back to enlisted status. And uh, he said the best way, he said, what we really need are uh, gunners on B-17s. So they sent me to gunnery school at Denver, Colorado, which was six weeks. And when I graduated from there, I did fairly well. So they said, what we really, really need 
are radio operator gunners, which means that you operate the radio to and from the war zone, but then while you're in the war zone, you man a gun. So I went to radio school in, in uh, being raised in Southern California and going to radar, uh, radio school in Minot, North Dakota in the middle of winter was, was a, an experience. We had a 24-hour school going there, and it was all the old did ah did ah dash school. And we finished there, and then they, I said, now I'm ready. And they said, well, what we, what we really need is if you could go to radio mechanic school so that you could do minor maintenance on the radio while you're in flight, and that would make you, you know, more valuable to us. So they sent me to Madison, Wisconsin to, uh, to go to radio mechanic school. So that was another six weeks. So I went through that school and I said, now? And they said, well, since you've been going to all these schools, we're now in electronics. And we've taken the regular radios out of the aircraft and put electronic. So they sent me to Chanute, Illinois to go to electronic school. So that was another six weeks. And so I said, now? And they said, now. So they assigned me to a crew. We did some orientation flying around the states for about a week. They sent us to Hawaii. We were there about a week. And then they sent us to the Philippines. And we landed in the Philippines the day after they liberated. The war was over. Wow. So they grounded us and said, you're going to hand out supplies to the prisoners. And so that's what I did for another six months till my term was up. And then I got out. So that was pretty much the extent of my World War II. Uh, history. As soon as I got out, I wanted to get back in cadets. Well, they had a two-year school re uh, uh, college requirement then. You had to have two years. So I, I enrolled in Chafee under the GI Bill, and I went two years at Chafee and uh, got back in cadets and uh, was sent to um, Perrin Field in Texas, where I flew the T-6 uh, for six months and uh, graduated from there. And when I graduated, I had my choice. I was, I had flown uh, while I was in college. I uh, took up flying and flew light airplanes. So I had some experience in flying when I went into the cadets a second time. Uh, so I did, I did pretty well in my classes in, uh, in school. So my instructor said, he said, Lynn, you've got a choice. I can give you F-51s or I can send you to jet school. Which one do you want? And I said, well, I've always loved that 51, but I said, jets are kind of exciting too. And he said, well, let me give you some advice. He said, you'll be flying jets the rest of your career. But he said, you'll never regret flying that F-51. So I chose the F-51 at uh, Craig in, in uh, Alabama. And uh, there were 22 in our class. And of the 22, we all went to Korea, 11 of them didn't come back. So we had a 50% attrition rate out of the 51s. But it was uh, a wonderful airplane to fly. I never regretted making that decision. Uh, probably hurt me a little bit in, in that if I'd have gone on to jet school, I'd have probably been in F-86s and got to be a MiG killer, or at least a chance at MiGs, and where it turned out my career turned the other way and I was in the bombing business.